Well, welcome to Coffee with Job for Wednesday morning. And we're just asking a question. What does, what does God know? We're looking at the, the knowledge of God. Now, Eliphaz in verse 12 says this, Is not God in the heights of heaven and see how lofty are the highest stars? Yet you say, what does God know? Does he judge through such darkness? Thick clouds veil him so he does not see us as he goes about in the vaulted heavens. Will you keep to the old path that the wicked have trod? They were carried off before their time, their foundations washed away by a flood. They said to God, leave us alone. What can the Almighty do to us? Yet it was he who filled their houses with good things. So I stand aloof from the plans of the wicked. The righteous see their ruin and rejoice. The innocent mock them saying, surely our foes are destroyed and fire devours their wealth. This is an extraordinary preach from Eliphaz. It contains so many good things. Um, and yet, it just, this, this, this amazes me. He's talking about, he's got this image of God as being up there and he's saying that Job has this image and that God looks down and he, he, he can see everything but Job is stupid enough to think that the clouds obscure God, that God can't work it out. Now, whether that's literal clouds or whether it's, you know, our sin or whatever. And Eliphaz is saying, God knows. Of course God knows. Now, Job knows that God knows. How does he deal with that? I mean, I think lots of people don't. I think there are people who say, well... As in Psalm 73, how can God know? Is there knowledge in the Most High? I think that the knowledge of God, the all-knowing of God, is actually quite an uncomfortable doctrine. And so we think that he doesn't know. When we pray, what are we doing? Are we telling God something he doesn't know? No, of course not. We're expressing what's on our heart and we're talking to him as one does with a father, at least a good father. But the knowledge of God, Eliphaz is wrong about Job, but I just want to focus just for a second on what we think about God knowing all things. Can I hide from God? Adam and Eve, when they ran away, did they think they could hide from God? Psalm 139, where can I go from your spirit? Now, that's actually quite scary if you see the knowledge of God as being like the big brother in the sky the person who knows and sees everything. I mean, I find it quite scary that a lot of the electronic equipment we have, Google and Siri and other things, they know so much about us. What about God knowing everything about us? That's awesome. And a bit scary, except this. There's, the word knowledge is, is used of God in different ways, so it talks about intimacy, how he knows his people. And it talks about how the Lord knows those who are his. We don't have that level of knowledge. There are so many things that we don't know that we are scared of somebody who knows it all. But I love this, not that God just knows everything. He's not some supercomputer, but he knows in the sense of loves. Jesus says, I know my sheep and my sheep listen to my voice. To be known by God is one of the most scary things. You know, the fact that God knows, you can't hide. There's nothing that you can hide from God, okay? You can't escape in that way. But to be known by God, to know that God knows everything about you, there's nothing he's going to discover about you that makes him go, oh, oh I didn't know that. I don't want anything to do with him. To know that he, he, he doesn't just know about you, but he knows you, he loves you. He, despite your sin, despite all that he knows, not because of what he knows, he is drawn to you. I, I can't describe how beautiful that is. Your heavenly father knows. Cast all your burdens upon him because he cares for you. May God bless you and see you tomorrow. Bye.